Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be really brave. I've just uploaded the 10 things I love about Iceland. Now I'm going to sit down and share with you the 10 things I hate or dislike about Iceland. Number one is the wind. The wind in Iceland drives me crazy. It makes you feel so much colder than it even is here. It doesn't get that cold, but the wind, it just whistles through the buildings and the stairwell and the front door. And as much as you pull everything really tight and make sure all the windows are closed, it's still whistling and it's really strong. So when you're out, especially walking a buggy, you can get like knocked over pretty much. Number two, it is expensive here. Iceland costs so much because it's this tiny little island in the middle of nowhere, everything has to be imported in. You have to pay tax on it, you have to pay VAT, you have to pay all sorts of things. So it's really difficult to actually just get anything that you wanna buy. If it's like a little treat, then you just talk yourself out of it. If you wanna go out for dinner, you really do think twice about it. You hear that constantly. If you're in the line at the airport to board the plane, all you hear is how expensive Iceland has been. And people just need to know that it's expensive before you come here because there are ways of doing it. You can get like vouchers and codes and you can go to happy hours and all that kind of thing. Um, but you just need to plan for it. You need to know that it's gonna be expensive before you come here. And then if you are of the mindset that everything will cost double or triple what you expect it to be, then you might have a happy surprise. <laughs> Number three is a slow pace of life. Now, yes, I did say this in the love video <laughs> of Iceland, but it's also here in the heat because it drives me insane how chilled out people are. Yes, Thetared dust, everything will work out and it does, but you kind of have to push them sometimes and people are just not that productive, not of the same level that you might expect. And so it kind of does drive me a little bit crazy. Um, things like important documents. It's a small country, so you can get a passport really, really quickly. That was amazing when we got Mia's passport, but I had to change my driving license because I'd been here for a certain amount of time and also because Brexit is potentially on the cards. Um, and so, putting in the application and then they were just chill. Like, I didn't even know if they'd changed it or not. Should I go and collect it? What should I do now? Yeah, if you if you want to come by, you can pick it up. <laughs> just so relaxed. Number four is the long summer nights. Now, the winter does not really bother me. I'm quite happy to hibernate and put on some Christmas movies in October, November. <laughs> um, but the summer, I now sleep permanently with an eye mask on. We have blackout blinds and everything, but I mean, it, it happens a bit in Scotland, but it's not as dramatic here as here in Iceland. So we have maybe four hours of where the sun has gone down. It's not really dark, dark, but four hours where it's dark in the summertime. And that has taken a lot to get used to. And the sun is out from 10 o'clock at night. So you can kind of go out and enjoy the summertime, but it's not really that sunny through the day because it's typically cloudy. So that's kind of a frustrating one. Number five is the driving in Iceland. Oh, it honestly, I want to put a dash cam on the car so that I can show you some of the incidents that happen as I'm just driving around, going about my normal day, people just pulling in and out of lanes Overtaken, undertaken, nobody indicates. Roundabouts here are crazy. You give way to the wrong side and it's really weird. Without being too rude towards anyone who's Icelandic who's watching, but then you've clicked on a hate Iceland video, so what do you expect? Um, but people really do go about in their own bubble and they're kind of just looking at their own way of getting from A to B, so who cares if you're the one that really has right of way, or if you're a pedestrian, <laughs> you don't have right of way because that person doesn't really want to give you right of way. Um, so they will just come into your lane. They will merge on the motorway. They will not let you merge in. Uh, they won't move over lane to let you in. Yeah, it's a difficult one. People just, they go about their own day and their own bubble and who cares about you? Number six. Boy, can Icelandic people be very direct. Ingmar always says to me, you have to think about the history of Iceland and that not that long ago, people were living in caves here, <laughs> which is a very dramatic way of putting it and very direct. 
Um, but yes, people kind of get to the point really quickly and it can be, especially when you come from a country like Britain where manners are everything and everyone says please and thank you and all these, you know, niceties. That's not really a thing here. Um, even in Icelandic, there isn't a word for please because they just don't have time for it. They never have had time for it because it's been about survival in Iceland. <laughs> That's what the Viking reassures me. Um, yeah, so people are very direct in what they're saying and how they say it. And it's quite easy to take offense sometimes. So watch out for that. Um, there's, there are no real mannerisms here. Uh, you don't really often hear excuse me or um, people will just brush past you and that's it. Number seven, the language is so hard. It's hard to pronounce things. Of course it is. Eyjafjallajökull. That's the volcano that Iceland is famous for. Pause the video and try it. Eyjafjallajökull. I have to admit, I haven't put a lot of effort into learning Icelandic. I tried uh, one course, I did the introductory level, I passed it and then redid the introductory level because I wasn't ready to move on. I passed that one and she said to me, you need to move up a level and I said, I don't feel like I've learned anything. I'm not ready for that and so I kind of just gave up. I also maybe got the Viking to do my homework for me on a number of occasions, so I did cheat. I am at the level now where I can say enough to kind of get me by and yeah, can say sorry I don't speak Icelandic, I speak English. Um, I have tried, I really have, and I can understand enough in family situations to follow a conversation, but I will speak back in English because A, I just don't have the confidence, B, I don't have the experience really, and C, at what point would I have ever learnt Icelandic anyway? The languages that I have been exposed to in the past are just not similar to Icelandic, so I really struggle with the grammar and with the pronunciation, and I have had a few people just outright laugh at me or say that I'm ruining their language by the way that I speak it, and so those hits to my confidence have not helped me, so I think I'm gonna have to rely on Mia teaching mummy Icelandic. Number eight is something that if you are also a foreigner watching this living in Iceland, you probably agree with me on. The lack of groceries or just the quality of groceries that we get here, the quality of food. Fruit and veg especially. It is a strong word, but I'm gonna say I hate going food shopping here. I feel like I get my hopes up every time I go there and then I'm just disappointed each time. I know this sounds so dramatic, but it's food. It's what you nourish your body with. And when it's a wintry day and you just need soul food, you want some good vegetables to roast or make a big pan of soup and everything's just moldy and looking a bit naff like it's been in a shipping container for however many weeks and then eventually got to the supermarket and it's already way past its best and they still want full price for it. It's very disheartening. There's not a huge amount of variety in the shops here. There's also not that many shops to choose from in the first place and they're all very expensive. So between a lack of good food <laughs> and just the expense of it all, yeah, makes me very, very sad. Now when I go back to the UK and I walk into like a Sainsbury's or a Tesco or something, I feel culture shock, like reverse culture shock. I go in there excited for all this food that I can buy at a decent price. And I literally just stand there, like there's just too much to choose from. I don't know what I want anymore. And I leave with maybe a packet of strawberries and a packet of salt and vinegar crisps and some tea. <laughs> And that's it. Number nine is, how do I put this? Iceland is a small place, <laughs> to say it quickly. Um, it can be really difficult as an outsider coming in, it is definitely a bubble. And you will always kind of be this outsider. Now I've lived in Japan and India and the UK before moving here. Even in cultures that are so different to mine, I have felt more accepted possibly because I could speak a bit, a lot more of the language, but I felt more accepted than I do here in a country that is 
actually quite similar to my culture. Now language plays a big part in that, I understand, and I need to make more of an effort, but I think speaking to a lot of other women of foreign origin here in Iceland, this is something that's very common. So Iceland is a small place, a small community. Um, most Icelanders live in the city, so in Reykjavik, and there is just a general feeling of kind of protecting Iceland, Icelanders, and what Icelanders do or what they're all about. Um, and so the culture, jobs, economy, and whatever. And rightly so, because it's really important to keep your own heritage, your culture, your language, all of those kind of things. I completely understand and support that. But it means that if you are coming here and you maybe get residency or you get a visa or whatever, it is really difficult to integrate yourself into society, not only finding a job and making money here, but also just making local friends. It tends to be that people make friends from school or from their hometowns and they almost have a friendship group and that friendship group is full. So there's no room for this outsider to come in. Um, even though, you know, I'm a great person and I have loads to offer, <laughs> I very much feel like I kept on the edges and so it is a bubble and it's really hard to get into the bubble instead of being a bubble as a foreigner living in a different country and you can't, you're kind of safe in your bubble. It's almost the other way around. You can't penetrate their bubble. Icelanders are lovely, don't get me wrong. Once you get to know them and they get to know you and there's a trust there, then they're very warm and welcoming. But it is judged straight away on what you do or what you kind of bring to society, and what you can kind of offer them, how you can both kind of benefit from knowing each other, having each other in your lives, which again is very direct. It tends to be when you meet an Icelander, they'll ask you straight away, what do you do? Where are you from? Which is a valid question, absolutely. But when you do the kind of work that I do, it's really hard to A, explain what I do, but B, help them understand that I work for myself. It's kind of trendy here to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> Maybe trendy isn't the word, but there are a lot of entrepreneurs here. And so if I say, that I fit into the entrepreneur bracket, then I'm maybe more accepted, but I don't feel very comfortable calling myself an entrepreneur. I am a self-employed designer, content creator, copywriter, uh, architect, uh, online educator. I do a lot of different things. And uh, people here find that really, really hard because they just expect that's a hobby and I'm not making money and therefore I need to find a job. And so there's this collection of people that Every time I see them now, even though I am working and I'm busy working and I'm also a working mum, they will say, have you got a job yet? Have you found a job yet? Are, are you working? It chips away at me and it drives me a little bit crazy because, well, and this isn't everyone, but these type of people have very closed minded views on just what people do these days. And I think that what I've created is wonderful because I can move anywhere in the world and I still have my business and I still have my clients and my students and I still have videos and content and whatever. And I can take that with me. I've built that up because of that sort of um, citizen of the world <laughs> idea. Um, but to them, they don't really understand that. They can't get their head around that. And I just have to think of that as that's sad for them and move on. Number 10 is just going back to that idea that it is really hard to make friends here. It's really hard to be living abroad in the first place when you don't have your family and your set of friends there and available. I think most of my friends are, yeah, they're all <laughs> partners of an Icelander um, or have moved here and that didn't work out and they've stayed. Um, so most of my friends are not Icelandic and I have found it really, really hard to actually get into an Icelandic circle of friends. And I feel like I am missing out on quite a bit of the culture and the lifestyle and also helping with my language here, with my Icelandic. It's something that I really enjoyed doing when I've lived in other countries and I hope that I'll be able to do that here. Um, but it's just something that has been really difficult to do.
Thanks very much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and tick the bell so that you get notifications of any other videos I'm uploading. And if you have any love or hate Iceland things to share with me, make sure you put them in a comment down below. I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.